Hey, it's Jamie, and welcome to a selects edition of Eventual Millionaire. This is where we go back and find the best of the best, the ones that you've loved from the past six seven years. We've been doing this a long time and there's some amazing interviews with amazing guests that you have not seen yet. So we are bringing them back. It is the Selects Edition. Let us know what you think and I hope you enjoy. Potent advice and inspiration from real self-made millionaires. Welcome to The Eventual Millionaire with your host, Jamie Masters. Welcome to Eventual Millionaire. I'm Jamie Masters, and today on the show, we have Paul Elliott. You can check out his site, but he's a serial entrepreneur. He runs UniqueCoreSolutions.com, real estate investor, all sorts of fun, amazing stuff. We started chatting for a long period of time, and I was like, okay, we need to start recording, so that way we can get all the good information. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Paul. No worries. So I'm all, uh, I'm all excited. I'm all hyped up. I've had a, uh, do, we, do we crack jokes that people don't get? Because I'm Th never sure that's if the Joe plan. carry across the ocean. Totally. Right? No, they, yeah, yeah. only here, only to Austin, Texas. Everybody else will not get it at all. So <laughs> I love it. it. And that's all that matters. So all right. Well, I'm psyched. <laughs> I'm really pleased to be here. I love it. So tell us what the heck Unique Core Solutions is. Because you wrote on your expertise, that is your expertise. And I was like, I don't know what that means. So tell me more. Yeah. It, uh, well, let me, tell, let me tell you the background because then it makes more sense. Okay. Um, I spent the last, let, let me go really way, 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 way back. Um, I... I came out of college, so we're going a long way back. You know, dinosaurs ruled the world and all that kind of stuff. But I awesome. came out of college, and I went into my first job because I was raised in a family which was all about work hard, get good grades, get a degree, go get a good job, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I did that. And I remember rocking up my first day at work, and I was there well in time for the 9 o'clock in the morning. Everything started. Sat down at my desk. Within an hour, I was bored. And I was like, there is no way I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. So... Consequently, I didn't last long. I got fired and then I needed another job to pay the rent. So I took another job and I got fired again. Uh, then I took my third and final job I've ever had in my life and got fired again, at which point I started my own business. Third so, time's a charm. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I and, and this is where it kind of gets a little bit crazy, you know, because nobody at school ever says to you, if you're going to start a business, here's what you need to know. You know, here's the skills you're going to need and everything else. They just so you have no idea. And if I, nobody in my family had obviously ever had a business. So if I spoke to them, they didn't have a clue. They were just employed people and always had been employed. So I just thought, well, obviously I'd start a business. What's the most important thing you need when you start a business? An office, clearly. And of course, the address of the office is absolutely paramount. So I decided I was going to have an office in Leicester Square in London. So I don't know if you've been to London. I don't know if you've been to Leicester Square. It's where yes. they roll out the red carpet for I all know. the previews, the films, and everything else. Yep. So it's like the most expensive real estate in the country. And I decided that's where my office had to be because that was going to obviously be the, the reason I would be successful is the, is the address. So I had this address. Um, the, the office is, was literally a tiny cubicle painted gray with a gray filing cabinet, a wooden desk, and a telephone system, which was state of the art for the time it was, it, I was around. And I mean, literally this thing, you know, if, depending what day of the time of day you rang, it would leave different messages. It could say, you know, Paul's out, it's in the morning, or have a good day, or have a good afternoon, go get yourself a coffee. You know, I mean, it was, it was a really state-of-the-art phone system. The only thing it never did, of course, was ring. So it got to the point where I would literally ring my own office from my flat in Clapham, south of the river, so that when I got in, I'd see the little red light on the phone, and I'd be like, oh, somebody loves me. They've left me a message, you know, but of course it was me. So that's how sad it was. Um, eight months into this thing, this is how slow a learner I was. Eight months in, I ran out of money, my, or I should say my flexible friend ran out of money, my plastic cards, and I was like, oh, I can't pay the rent. And I remember ringing the, the people that ran the building and saying, I can't pay the rent this month, and, and I need to get out of this contract that I've signed. And they were like, no, that ain't happening. You, you, you're liable. You need to find the money. And I had this conversation with this woman on the phone, and in the end, I said, you know what? I said, look, I'm really asking for your help here. I said, as one human being to another, I need a break. She said, come and see me. I had to come out of my building, into another building, Leicester Square, went sat down with her. By the time I got to her, she was ripping the contract up. Wow. And she said, she said, look, I get it. She said, I, I wish you all the success. Once you get back on your feet, come and have a chat with us again. And I walked out. And two, a couple of days later, because I reflected, and I, I'm obviously, I gave her a big hug and a kiss, and I thanked her, and I was like, oh, thank you so much. And, and I walked out. And um, I, I sat and thought about it, and I thought, what changed? Hmm. Like, she started out as a real kind of hard-nosed business person, kind of, no, you signed a contract, that's it, you know, the devil's going to take your soul if you try and get out of it type stuff. And, and then it all shifted. 
And for whatever, that really got me interested in influence. And that's where everything began. Because once I kind of got interested in influence, that was it. I mean, at school, I was good at school. I was academic. So I was like, okay, let's start with all the books. So I'm reading all the books on influence. And I got into psychology, marketing, sales. Then I started um, tracking people down. So I went out for lunch with Robert Caldini. You know, the oh, book of influence. course I do. Yeah, he, yeah. Came, he, he came to London. So I was like, oh, the, the dude's in London. I'm going to go and see him. So I went to see him and I said, Look, you know, can we, can we go out for lunch? Wait, he so said we okay for, for go, you guys going out for lunch? Because you would think yeah, well, that, he, that would well, be difficult. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. He was running a seminar. So I, I also, I spoke to the promoters and I said, you know, I've, I've, died, I've read his books, I've applied everything he's got in there and it works, his stuff's brilliant. I, I listened to the interview that Tony Robbins did with him and thought that was fantastic and obviously that gave me some more ideas and I've used all of that and that's brilliant. I've got my own ideas that I've developed from it. So what's in the seminar? And they said, oh no, it's all new stuff, it's all great. I said, cool, I'll, I'll have a ticket as well then. So I turn up for the first morning, sit down and, and Robert, God bless him, you know, he knows his stuff but he is an academic. And I would say halfway through the first day, I'm like, this, this is all in his book. So I went over and said, you know, excuse me, this is all in your book. <laughs> you know, like, I didn't come all this way for what's in your book sort of thing. So, so a little bit of leverage there. So I said, how about we go out for lunch and you tell me stuff that isn't in the book? <laughs> you know, so. That's so impressive, though. Usually we like grovel at, you know, authors and be like, oh, it was amazing. Can we take you yeah. to lunch? You're amazing. Yeah, and you're like, me, yeah. no, this wasn't good <laughs> enough. Like, yeah. You need to, you yeah, need to exactly. fix this. Yeah, raise your game, dude. <laughs> That's impressive. Huh? Yeah, oh, so yeah. we went out. Hey, I'll tell you, it's even more impressive. This will sound like I'm name dropping. And um, we went out, we started talking. And I, I said, like, I loved your book. I loved it. And here's what I've done with it. And I started talking and he was like, Wow. And he literally gets a notebook out and starts making notes on what I'm saying. I said, hold on a minute. I came in to talk to you and interview you, not the other way around. You know, so, but yeah, he was, he was a really cool guy at the end. So, but influence was the big thing. Mm -hmm. So from there, I then, I got involved in uh, neurolinguistic programming, NLP, yep. which I'm sure a lot of people, a lot, a lot of your listeners are familiar with. And that obviously through Tony Robbins, through a, a guy called Ed Straker, who's still rocking around. He's now a spiritual type guy. I see him on Facebook. But at the time, he was teaching a speed reading course, you know, one of these read at 20,000 words a minute type thing. And I actually flew to Singapore. He was doing a seminar in Singapore. I met him in Australia on a diving trip. He's the one that told me about NLP and about Tony Robbins and Richard Bandle and people like this. So we're jumping around a little bit. So I do go off on tangents. I apologize. I was, uh, and, well, ADD entrepreneur, I get it. What year was yeah, that, though? Yeah. What year did you know oh, all that? Oh, God, that was in the 90s. Yeah, I mean, now we're going back a few years, you know, I've been around a while. So I remember getting back to shore because Ed had kind of inspired me with this stuff. And my other big passion is martial arts. Really? So I had this Mine idea. too. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So I mean, to Shotokan Karate. So I thought I could use this to help me with karate competitions specifically, you know. So, so I got back, I read Unlimited Power, I read Frogs into Princes and thought, okay, this, this is good stuff. So I kind of took all of this and then said, okay, I'm going to launch an NLP business. So I did the whole NLP stuff launched a business and the way I promoted it was to run free taster events. So I need, I want to reach people. I want to share ideas. I want to have, make a difference and I can't do it one-on-one. -on -one. That'll take too long. So I need to do it one to many. So I need to learn how to speak from stage and there's no point just speaking from stage because obviously everyone's had that teacher that bores you to death, like in Ferris Bueller's day off where everyone's kind of like zoned out, hypnotized, but drooling in a bad way. I thought, no, no, I want to be able to do this in an interesting way, I want to entertain people as well. So, you know, I kind of started learning these skills. And then I, we ran this advert, like, you know, you've talked about, you've interviewed how many on millionaires Almost now? 400, yeah. 400, yeah, more than me. But I started out, because the big thing in NLP was modeling. Mm -hmm. So I literally, this is way before the internet exists in its form today. So, I mean, it didn't, didn't really, wasn't really used as a tool in the early 90s. I used to stalk millionaires. Literally, I mean, I'd, I'd go find it. Like, I started by doing it the polite way. You ring somebody's office and say, you know, can I speak to such and such? And, and I tell you, to a person, every one of their personal assistants, secretaries, whatever you want to call them, always said, no, 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 they're busy. Okay, can I call tomorrow? No, they're still busy. How about next week? No, they're still busy. Three months from today? No, they're still busy. Okay, then. So the way around that was to rock up to their offices. And oftentimes, particularly if they were men and they were running a reasonable sized business, they would have their private parking space. So you knew who ran the building. You knew who ran the company. I just hang out by their car. So when they came out, you really like, were hey. stalkerish. Oh yeah, I really was a stalker. Yeah, I didn't get arrested, thankfully, but 
I stalk them. How and do I you, say, look, I need, get, I need your help. Yeah, I was going to say, how do you get somebody to pay attention to you? Okay. Well, you this need- is influence again, isn't it? It's like if you come in there uh, guns blazing, pretending to be something you're not, then obviously it never works. But what I found was a really good approach was just to say, I really need your help. You know, I just want 90 minutes of your time. So make it very specific. It's not like I want to go on and on for months and years. So it's like I want, I, I'd like 90 minutes of your time. You name the restaurant, you name the time. It's all on me. I just want to sit down with you and ask some questions about how you've achieved the level of success you've achieved. And when I put it that way, nine, nine and a half times out of 10, people said yes. Yeah. Really? So it's, that's really interesting, especially because nowadays they talk about give first, give first, give first. And you're like, oh, by the way, I need your help. I'll pay for dinner, but I need your help. I'm surprised yeah. they said yes even then. I mean, of course, that was a little while ago too, and it might be a little bit yeah, but different. I think in one way it was, you know, giving attention. Yep. Uh, I guess because the internet wasn't really how it is today, so there wasn't that, you know, everybody talks to everybody all the time and Definitely. everybody's a fan of everybody's pages. There was that, you know, and especially with men, you know, they're all driven by ego, status, significance. So to kind of put them almost on a pedestal, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm very successful. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. So, you know, so, so they were happy to come out. And, and I would say, in fairness, the majority of them actually paid for dinner. That's so awesome. even though I said I would pay for it when I sat down, they said they paid for dinner. And that's what I did. I used to, and I used to just treat it as a, a kind of a modeling project. It was like, I want to know what your beliefs are. I want to know what your strategies are. I want to know what you sell. I want to know how you got it to market. You know, so, and that's what I did. And I had this then recipe of how, and, there, and you know yourself, you've spoken to so many people who've achieved certain level of success in property or, or in business. There are patterns. There's no doubt there are patterns. Definitely. And they soon become obvious. And so it's like, right, I want to share these patterns with the people because this is kind of compressing decades into days, as Tony Robbins would call it, you know, so. That's what I did. And here's where it got really interesting because I thought I understood influence. I thought I understood sales. So we ran an advert and the advert just said notes from a millionaire and it invited people to a free event in a hotel in Victoria, actually, in London. So 70 people turned up. Wow. This one Tuesday night. Yeah, it was, I mean, this is in the early days. This is before seminars really kicked off in the UK. And <clears throat> 70 people turned up. I did a two hour presentation. Everybody loved it. And at the end of it, I said, you know, we're running this three day seminar. Here's the price. Everybody will rush to the back, go buy it. And guess how many bought? I hope it's zero. No. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Good. So we like hearing these stories because it makes us feel oh. better when zero people yeah. buy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but of course, then you, I'm sat there with my wife and with uh, the two guys who were more than happy to work with me. And uh, it was like, okay, so how many adverts at three and a half thousand pounds can we afford to pay for if nobody buys? <laughs> you know? So it was like something needs to was change. Was three and a half thousand pounds for the for that seventy for the seventy people for the advertising? Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, Facebook yeah. ads people way cheaper nowadays. I, Thank oh goodness. god, yeah, but that didn't exist. I mean, this was literally yeah. print ads in the Evening Standard, which is still a, a popular paper. You know, and so you, you know, I took out like half a page, and that's what it cost at the time. I mean, it was a crazy money. You know, and again, you know, your flexible friend comes to the rescue when you've got nothing. And it was really interesting because I remember at that time there was a company who's since gone out of business, but they were they sold computers, and they had this incredible deal where you could literally walk into one of their stores, walk out with a, the latest laptop, with nothing down and nothing to pay for nine months. And I, I always told all my friends, I said they are the entrepreneur's friend. They are there to get you started. It's like you walk in, you walk out with a laptop, you, you're set. <laughs> you know, so. Oh my gosh. And then you have to return it nine months later because you're like, oops, here we go. Play, yeah, well, I made yeah, some money. Mistake, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> all right. So let's, so keep going because I want to know, especially because what you're doing now, I want to make sure we have enough time to carry on with all this stuff that's going on now. So keep going. All right. So what then happened was I went, okay, look, if I'm not understanding this in terms of, you know, influence one on one seems to be working, influence one to many isn't working. We need to find people that do this professionally, that do this very successfully. So the, again, the whole modeling approach find people who got the result I wanted. And that's exactly what I did. Now, at the time, there was not really anybody in the UK who was doing that. It was more, you know, the, in America, certainly, it was more well-established, plenty of people doing pitch speaking, as you might call it. So I started looking at some of the Americans. And it didn't take long to realize there needed to be a structure to the presentation. There needed to be certain elements of scarcity and everything else in it. And so I started doing that. And I got really good. And then around that time, as I was getting good, I was running out of money really quickly. And then this is where things, I, I've always, I, I call, sometimes I say to people, I talk about the spooky stuff. You can't explain it. Just stuff happens. Now, in this case, a friend of mine rang me. He'd got a business also selling education type products. And he said, look, uh, he knew I was heavily involved in property or had been. And he said, look, I, I want to launch a property education. Will you come and help me? So I went to help him because he had plenty of startup capital. I didn't have any. 
and he had running adverts and he was starting to fill rooms and he needed somebody to convert the room. So I literally, in one respect, got another opportunity, in another respect, got a whole laboratory to test everything I thought could or would work. So, so you were just learning beforehand and then you would have had to try and figure out a way to actually sell, we'll get more advertising money so that way you could exactly. sell more and it yeah, just sort of yeah. all collided yeah. for you. But it all Test it out collided. on someone else's stuff. That's exactly. even better. Yeah, use someone else's money. So I did that um, and I, I worked with him for a year and I said, look, I'll give you a year. And we basically did what? Three million in sales of seven hours. So or apparently like your education paid off. My gosh. My education paid off. My self education paid off. Yeah. And literally, I took a presentation that he'd had written by somebody in the States and I delivered that once. And I went back to my office and said, this, this presentation sucks. Can I change it? So you can do what you want with it. So I literally rebuilt it and then just started testing little things. And so it started out with probably converting 10% of the room for a 2,000 pound product. So it was a high, reasonably high ticket. And within about six months, maybe a little bit less, I was doing 20% of the room, you know, so. That's and that impressive. Was That's crazy. Yeah, just changing elements, yeah. Yeah, so that, therefore, meant I suddenly really understood influence. And I've done a lot of speaking from stage since. I've done a lot of selling from stage since. And there are things that make a difference, you know, and. And that's really what I've injected into Unique Core Solutions. I then, because obviously when the internet took off, I went, I wonder if I can do this online. And like a webinar, well, what's a webinar? It's a sales pitch. It's exactly the same. I'm just not on a stage. So started doing that and it works just as well. Okay. So that's great. A thousand questions. Okay. So okay. because, well, because webinar, so everybody talks about this stuff, right? And yeah. they know that it, they, they probably heard of Influence, um, uh, the book, and, and have learned a lot of tactics Right. But I feel like there's a disconnect between just testing a bunch of tactics. Cause like you said, you changed a bunch of things. So they're like, Oh, I heard you changed a bunch of things. I'm going to come up with a good idea and then I'm going to change some things and it'll eventually work. And then people come back to me going, Oh, it did it. It did it work. Or you know what I mean? So like, what yeah. can you tell us, um, top level view for now to make sure that when we do go out and try and sell, we're hitting the right stuff or have the right overarching yeah. goal instead yeah. of just a tactic approach. All right. I mean, there, there is, um, there is a, certainly a structure to your presentation, but within there, I think there wouldn't be anything that people haven't already heard. Yes. Maybe the order of it might be slightly different, but they wouldn't, wouldn't be haven't heard. What I would say is one of the things we did start to do is we started to bring in other speakers. We wanted leverage and we could bring in people who were very accomplished speakers and they would suck at selling. Yeah. So they didn't last very long. Yeah. And we would bring in accomplished pitch speakers and give them the presentation. And they would get good results, but they didn't get the results I was getting. And interestingly, I was in South Africa a couple of years ago, and we were doing a, like a little mini tour, and there was a, a number of local, local talent there in terms of speakers. And when the guy was hosting the whole thing, he used to get up at the beginning, and he, and he was real motivational, real entertaining, lovely, lovely guy. And I remember having a chat with him after one of, the, one of the events, and he was saying, he said, I hate selling. I said, no, I can tell. I said, as soon as you start selling, I said, your whole energy shifts, everything changes, the audience feels uncomfortable, and that's why you're not getting the results you want. He goes, no, but he said, I hate it. I feel like it's just, ew, it's horrible. And I said, okay, look, here's what's missing. And this, when I've spoken to people, even if they're good at selling from stage, here's what makes my results better. And it's got nothing to do with tactics. Yes. It's to do with belief. See, I have a very, I have a core belief that whatever I'm doing is going to transform your life. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it because I'm here to make a difference. First and foremost, I'm here to make a difference. I'm not here to make money first. Money's important. It's got to be in the. It's got to be in the mix, absolutely. But I'm here to make a difference first. So therefore, I need you to come on a journey with me. But the only way you can come on the journey is if you buy the ticket, because otherwise, you're going to leave and you're going to go back to your day-to-day -day routine, back to your normal life, back to your normal environment, and all is going to change. 10 years from now, it'll be exactly the same. You'll just be 10 years older with more gray hair, more wrinkles, feeling more sorry for yourself. You've got to change, and that transformation has to start now. So the way it starts is you come on a journey with me. That's my core belief. So I have to do whatever is in my power to get you to make a decision to step up, come on this program, whatever it might be at the time, and therefore come on this journey, because it's going to change your life, and you're going to start seeing the results that you want to see show up in your life. That's what makes the difference. I genuinely care about people. And I have this absolute core belief that it's a journey and you've got to come on this journey with me. See, when I share those beliefs with people, if they ever take them on board, their results change without anything else happening. They could deliver exactly the same presentation, but because they're coming from a different place with a different set of, if, if you like, values and beliefs, then the results change. How do and we... people get it. I've, I've, I feel like I'm, I can be, the, you know, there's what? Probably 20 different ways you can close. 
And some of them can be very, in the UK, they'll say, oh, we don't like all that American stuff, you know, in your face, and this, that, and the other. I've met Americans who say, we don't like all that American stuff in your face. You know, it's like, it's yep. the same, it doesn't change. So, but I've had people come up to me afterwards and say, you know, if anybody else had said to me what you just said to me from stage, I'd have told them to, you know, they said, but what if somehow you saying it, you're right, I have to do this. The difference is I genuinely care and this is a journey and you better get your butt on it. So there's such a difference between like used car salesman who's just trying to get you into a car because you're trying to get you in they a car. They want the commission. Yeah. yeah. And somebody who actually is like, I want to fit the right car for you. And if you don't buy one that's for me, right. that's okay. But as long as you're happy, yeah, yeah. we're happy. Yeah. How yeah. do you how do you do that yourself? Because it's very different when you're the product. If you're selling the car and you're like, I'm just glad you're happy that you're with that. But when it's you, a lot of the times, especially people that are newer and just starting, they don't have that. They might be like, I know I will help you the best humanly possible. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be awesome. But like they can't, like you, you saying this, you could tell hardcore belief said this before, like, no, cool. how do yeah. we get from the beginning to where you are? I think there's a couple of things. One is actually there's um, to quote Tony Robbins actually because he I remember going to his Day with Destiny program I don't know 1999 or something, um, and he walked out and the first thing he said was the level of success you'll achieve in your life comes down to the amount of uncertainty you can comfortably handle. Mm. So what you're referring to is uncertainty. It's like do I believe in myself? Do I believe that I can help somebody get a result faster than they could get it on their own, or even get a result they couldn't get on their own? You got to know that. I absolutely know. I can get a result for somebody, help them, support them, get them to it than they ever could on their own, and much faster than they could on their own. Yeah. So you gotta believe that. And then I think the second part is, it's not about you. It's about them. Yeah. So the focus is on the client. The focus is on the person you wanna help. So it's almost like you're just a messenger. It's not about you at all. You're just, you're just delivering the message. You're not the message. Does that make sense? So it totally that's does. That's how I can look at it. Like yeah. stepping yeah. out of yourself, because otherwise we get in our heads and we're like, ah, I'm not good enough, oh, and all yeah. there's a thousand yeah. other oh, things. Totally, which is a human thing to do. Everybody does it, but yeah, you got to get out of the way of that because that is literally getting in your own way. Yeah. See, I I remember my first mentor because when I was very first learning, he's like, I want you to charge 150 an hour. And I remember going, I'm 24. <laughs> no, and and he goes, just tell them you'll give them your money back if you don't. And I was like, oh, that's helpful because if they're not happy, mm -hmm. I just want to make everybody happy. Yeah. So that was the only thing it took. I will do whatever I can. And if not, I'll give you your money back. And that made me feel so much better. And saying whatever the pitch that I needed to say was, it made all the difference in the world for my confidence. Because otherwise, I was like, oh, you know, how to buy. Because I came from Kirby vacuum cleaner sales, which is horrible to try and learn some of this. So I had to unlearn all that stuff to try yeah, and learn yeah, yeah. and actually care about cool. people. Yeah. So, so I would love to do this. So because uh, we were going over what you're really, really good at. And I feel like people ask me this question a lot, especially online nowadays, and you have such a history for this. So how do we, let's say um, somebody is selling a coaching program or whatever it is, and they want these high level clients that are amazing yeah. and awesome, but they have yeah. no list. They're not mm -hmm. doing like, they don't have 35, 100 pounds to, to do an advertisement. They have something. Um, they know that their message and, and what they teach is absolutely amazing and will change people's lives. What would you do? If I have zero money? Well, you have, you know, let's say a thousand bucks. Yeah, like oh, a thousand okay. bucks. A thousand bucks, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. Okay. Well, um, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess, um, the way, a couple of ways of approaching it. If you're going to go down the route of doing everything yourself just to get things going, you could do that with a thousand bucks, certainly today. I mean, like, you know, the internet just barriers to entry gone, you know. Uh, you might have a bit of a learning curve in terms of slapping up a website, learning a little bit of WordPress, basic stuff. Because ultimately, everything is about conversion. So, you know, people talk about getting traffic to their website. You don't have a traffic problem. You have a conversion problem. Because you, know, you have people saying, well, how much can you spend on advertising? Well, as long as it's profitable, I can keep spending all day long for the rest of my life. You know? So that's really a, always a conversion problem. But then most of conversion, I mean, online is a little bit faceless. But if you're moving them to an appointment, particularly for the high ticket stuff, yep. where they're booking an appointment with you, so they're getting on the phone with you, then it's really about positioning. Okay, so how do we so, even get them on the phone with us? Because I love that. I, I do that too, right? We I feel like I'm really good at selling on the phone. But a lot of people that don't have a list yet, even if they have a website, are like, how do I get those right people to hop on the phone with me and know and trust me and where do I find them? Yeah, yeah. Well, if I've got a thousand bucks and I'm definitely putting it on advertising, um, whether that's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, doesn't really matter anymore. I mean, it, just I take a guess. If you're not sure, split it between all three. 
but you can super target. So if we want high net worth people, then you know, target people who are high net worth. Facebook will tell you all of that. They have you know, partnerships with credit agencies and everything else, so they can give you very drill detail. But then obviously you're putting an advert in front of those people. Um, then literally, I mean, positioning comes back to, to you as an individual as well in the sense of your confidence in yourself. You know, that yes, there is the kind of the, the psychology aspect behind it. So, you know, from generalist at the bottom, which is kind of nobody to celebrity authority at the top, which is where you want to be, you know, so, you know, become a celebrity in a niche, but then they, people need to be familiar with you. So that, that's about putting some content out and really then it's down to do a little bit of research. You know, the people you want to work with, the people you want to help, what do they want to achieve? What are the problems for me? Like I love it when I reach people and I tell them a problem they don't even know they've got. Because that immediately makes you the expert. I you know, can't so remember moment, who said that. They said if you can describe the problem better than, oh, they, better than can, they can, then they yeah, think you have the solution. Yeah, I've heard Dude, that if you don't, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it but it's sometimes that, that it's even if they don't even know they have a problem. You know, so for example, right now, the baby boomers are retiring. Mm. Pension schemes or 401k plans, as you think you call them, are, are just, for the most part, nonsense. There's um, a scheme in the UK where they now made it law that if you employ one person, you have to provide a pension scheme for them. Like, why do I, why do I care about their financial future? They should be taking care of their financial future, but I have to provide a pension scheme for them. But then the amount of money being paid into these schemes, they're called workplace pensions, is so tiny. Hmm. And the growth of these schemes these people who are fund managers looking after them, no one is ever going to retire on this money, ever. They'll be looking if they can buy Starbucks coffee when they retire with this thing. It isn't ever going to work. Mm. So you've got all these people going, well, I'm paying this money into the pension. That's all I need to do. Uh, you know, I'm going to hit 60, 65 cents. I'm going to be able to retire. It's like, no. So when you make them aware that that's a real problem that they didn't even know they had, then they're like, oh, my God, what do I do next? Is I right? Now you need to take control of your own financial future. You either need a business, you start trading your own market, trading your own account, or you need to start buying real estate in the right way. Because that's I the other see. thing. You get people go, well, I need to buy property. I need to buy real estate. Great. So what did you do? Well, I went and bought all these properties and none of them cash flowed and then I went bankrupt. Well, that's not a good, good strategy, is it really? You know, so. so then again, it comes down to it's like, look at patterns. Like I'm a big fan of Harry Dents, you know, the economist. So he's all about the demographics. I'm a huge fan of that. And I've brought that, translated it to what goes on in the UK and what goes on in the markets here. And I look at different regions of the UK, the Southwest where I live is a, an area where a lot of people retire to, but it's also a very popular area. So there's a lot of younger families coming. So you go, okay, so what kind of properties are they going to need? You've got two big demographics there. What kind of properties are they going to need? And if house prices continue to rise, which they have done for now and probably will for the foreseeable future, and they can't afford to get in them, they're going to have to rent. So therefore, it's like, okay, well, there's a problem. Can I provide a solution? Can I help them make it even easier for them and say, okay, look, I'll put you in a property. You can rent it, but we'll, we'll write out and sign an option so you can buy it at some point in the future. And then you own your own home. Now they love you. Because this isn't, oh, I'm just renting from some horrible, scheming, nasty landlord. This is actually somebody who wants me to buy this property and make it my own home, which is a win-win because they then look after the property better than they would have done if they were just a tenant. And of course, they've now you're helping them achieve a dream or potentially achieve a dream at some point in the future, you know, so, so finding out what they want. So let's, let's bring want. it back to the because a lot of people, especially with the ads, if they have a thousand dollars, they're like, I don't know what to put. And if you're <laughs> this is what I want from you. So the influence side, how much are how crazy are we getting after we've figured out what they let's say we know exactly their pain and their problem really, really well, we can describe it better than them. Yep. Yep. How do we actually get them to click on an ad to fill out a thing yeah. to hop yeah. to me on the phone? You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel yeah, like totally. that's where everybody gets stuck. Assuming we okay. have the belief first, you know what I mean? Yes. Okay. Well, first of all, um, headlines that are questions work well. Okay. Um, so put the problem in a question. Like, for example, do you think you'll ever retire? <laughs> Question mark. Are you aware of the retirement crisis? Question mark. You know, so anything that kind of highlights, oh, I should pay attention to that. Um, what I have found with Facebook is images make a huge difference. And I don't understand why, but, you know, we've played around with all sorts of different images with different promotions and just the image doesn't necessarily relate to what you're doing. Okay. You know, like, like in the sense, you know, we, we tested pictures of chickens with, you know, do you, will you ever retire? And it worked. 
But it's like, the, I think the chicken just stands out. It just gets their attention amongst all of the other stuff that's going on on Facebook. Because we're so time. inundated with ads, we might as well yeah, just shake totally, it up. Yeah, so it's like a pattern interrupt, isn't it? You know, mm. So I think that probably then gets gets their attention, and then that gives them enough time to read the headline and go, oh, yes, I should pay attention to that. How did you make and a then, choice to pick a chicken, though? You know what I mean? How did you make a choice to pick random things that just testing-wise? Purely, purely the idea of a pattern interrupt. Okay. You know, so at least so, you had a plan going into it, going, yeah, I want something yeah. so it's, it's interesting. It's still influence. It's okay. like I need to I need to get their attention first. Yes. How do I get their attention? Well, if everyone's if everyone it's you know, it's um what's his face? Purple cow. Oh, Seth, Seth Gordon. Gordon. Yeah, I've yeah, interviewed yeah, him yeah. too. Like, yes. you know, if everyone's got black and white cows, you've got a purple cow, your purple cow stands out. You know, so it's that idea really, which is a pattern interrupt idea. Um, you know, Tony Robbins has made a, a science out of pattern interrupt. So just listen to him for a few hours oh, and you'll get some ridiculous. good ideas. You know? Yeah. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Um so that kind of works. And then once they click, then I'll tell you where are you sending them. And then, I'm sure they've heard this stuff before. It's like, where are you sending them? What's the, is there a lead magnet of some sort? Is there some action you want to take? Do you want to register for a webinar? What is it when they get there? What is it you want them to do? And then what's really cool now, of course, is it used to be that when they click the ad, that was it. You had one shot. Now you don't. So if they've oh, gone yeah. to your page, now you've got the whole retargeting. Yeah, retargeting. So this is the thing. I haven't... Yeah. I, so. I think they know very similar the the you know the standard funnel, but I haven't talked to anybody that really goes all in in the depth of the psychology behind it because I feel like we're just sold. You do an ad to a lead magnet to a webinar to a this, and then people try it and they don't have this basic stuff that you're talking about, which is hey, what do they actually care about? How do we do pattern? How do we make sure that these little things really add up to a greater whole instead of just randomly going, I think they want this and this sounds like a good lead magnet and then we create it and we did it and it's like, now my ad costs are ridiculously expensive and I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So tell um, me more about the process so that way we can right, dive in yeah. a little so deeper. So first of all, it's like obviously pain matters and think about what is it people want um, and I, uh, I keep, I've come back to Tony Robbins a couple of times here, but it, I found his six human needs model very useful. Mm. People want certainty. People want variety. People want significance, connection, love, growth, contribution. Certainty is huge. People pay a lot of money for certainty. Mm. When you start getting into very wealthy, like higher wealth, seven figures and so on, you'll find that people, especially men, will pay for significance. You know, So having an exclusive mastermind. Yep. They, they want to pay more. It's like I've got uh, somebody at the moment who I was just chatting to. I, mean, I, I go to breakfast networking events and so on and meet lots of people because I just like meeting people. And I was chatting to this guy and he designs his own watches. And I'm like, wow. And he was telling me about all the work that goes into the design and the make of it. And I'm like, this is fantastic. You know? And I went and looked up his website when I got home. And the first watch I saw was like 150 pounds or something. That's and it? Like, For cus- wow. Exactly. I was like, Really? Who's, who's going to buy that? <laughs> you know, so there was a disconnect between mm. his passion, the work that went into it, and the price. Because he's thinking, I need to be cheap. It's like, no, you've got this all wrong. I like, don't let buy me a watch you, to sell the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I buy a watch to show people how significant I am. You know, so it's like, put a couple more zeros on the end of that price tag and people will buy it. You know, so... But that's what I think people don't understand. Like we're so busy in the features. We're so busy in the trying to make it valuable because I feel like that's what we're sold for mass advertising. Like, oh, this is sort of the regular thing, but there's so many nuances to it. So I love this. Keep going. Yeah. So and and the other thing as well with advertising particularly, I'm sure you as a woman have had guys hit on you. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. And I'm sure there have been some guys, not all guys, but I'm sure there have been some guys whose interest was how quickly could I get this person into a bedroom, into bed. Yep. Yeah. So if you are having an advert on Facebook and they're going straight to a lead magnet, that's kind of the same. So first of all, as uh, John Gray, where men are from Mars, women are from Venus and so on, yep. he used to say, warm up the oven. So your advertising should warm up the oven. So have adverts that like longer posts, sponsored posts, show them content, send them to a video which just shows them how great you are. And send, when I say how great you are, in a sense of demonstrate your expertise. Do stuff like that first. Because you know they visited the page because we can retarget them now. So we don't have to go for, you know, how quickly can we get them into bed? We can go for let's warm up the oven a little bit because we can retarget these people. 
So let's do that. Let's let's show them a written article. Let's turn that into a video. Let's maybe strip out into a podcast. You know, so there's this whole in, in NLP terms, they call it modalities. What you see, hear, feel, taste and smell. Obviously, taste and smell doesn't work on the Internet. So what you see here has an impact in terms of how you feel. So let's show them articles. Let's demonstrate and articles which connect the dots for people. Uh, you know, I work with quite a number of financial advisors in this country mm -hmm. and they're like, you know, how do I promote this to high net worth people? It's like, it's real simple. You got to connect the dots for them. So you got to say to them, look, this is the problem. Here's where you are now. This is what's going to happen and anticipate in the future. This is what's going to happen. And here's how, here's the consequences of that for you. And then they're going, oh, wow, this guy's smart. You're connecting the dots. I love That's this. what makes you authority. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. So it's funny because we're doing new uh, guides and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, I have a perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting. People just write content. They get. They go. Oh, content marketing, and they just they'll spend months agonizing over a twenty five thousand word article, and they put it out, and they go, Google loves this. Like Google, don't pay my checks. So I don't give times a bleep over. if Google loves. <laughs> I love this. They've okay. already got their billion. <laughs> no kidding. So, so when we're looking at at connecting the dots, how can we do that the best way possible? Like, how can we make sure um, that uh, okay. when we do okay. that, yeah. All right, you get it. Yeah. Go. All right. Cool. All right. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is this is kind of re this is researching your client. When you when you start looking at who you want to target, then it's very much uh, I call it mapping the gap. I used to do this on stage. I'd start talking and I'd say to people, so, you know, like maybe where you are right now is, you know, you struggle to get clients through the door. You struggle to generate leads. You struggle to make appointments. You have people cancel appointments on you after they put in you thinking, oh, damn, you know, that was potential. That was potential money. That was potential rent money or whatever. So maybe all these kind of things are happening for you. That's here and now. But maybe where you want to be, and I used to walk across the stage, the other side, maybe where you want to be is in a place where you don't chase clients anymore. They chase you. You take they call if you feel like it. If you want to get out of bed that day and take somebody's call, you do. If you don't, you just sit back, chill, you know, have a $60 coffee or something. You know, it's like, so you get the idea, so you pay it. And all of a sudden there's this gap. You know, you got, you know, you've got a business. Maybe you want to be in a place where your business runs systematized. It's 99% automated, you know. So maybe you want to be in that place. And now it's generating income. It's a lifetime money machine for you. So there's this gap. So you want to know what that gap is for your clients. So where are they now? Where do they want to get to the desired results? And then you just look at the look at that gap and go, okay, what are the milestones? What do they need to do to get there? I love this. Okay, so you start breaking it down. Yeah, and so and it makes perfect sense because if you're going, I can describe your problem way better than you. And by the way, this is where you want to end up. Awesome. And then I know the main pain, main um, milestones, and they're like, oh my gosh, this person is so smart. Yeah, and they're not trying yeah. to sell me anything right now. I actually no. trust them. Okay. But then if I'm writing an article about that, I might pick one of those milestones to write an article about. But I'll go, I'll link it. You've got to make it relevant. You've got to link it back to where they are now and say, look, if you continue down this path, you're pointing out the consequences of doing nothing. And you're kind of saying, look, if you want to get here, this is important. And here's what's going to, and here's what's going to, and if you can then find some stats or something to back it up, which is why I like demographics and everything else and what's, what's shaping the world at the moment and what are we seeing politically and how does that have an impact on things. And then you're just connecting all of that. Mm. You're saying this is the consequences of this. This is the consequences of Brexit. This is the consequences of Trump becoming president. This is the consequences of building a fence or a wall or whatever it is, you know. Because I had a friend, I talked to a friend of mine today. I mean, he's my mentor, actually. He's a billionaire entrepreneur. And uh, we were having him, a... by the way. All right, keep, keep going. Yeah, yeah, no, I, can't, <laughs> yeah I, oh, I can't say too much. He'll, he'll okay. slap me. But yeah. um, we, we were having a chat this morning. And one of the companies he's, he wants me to get involved with is a travel company. And he said, oh, he said, well, you know, it's one of these like, you know, buy a membership type things and you get discounts on various things. And he said, like, you know, look at the, like, for example, and he said, look at this, you know, you can go to Mexico and $200 and spend six months there or something by the ocean. And it's like all five star all the way. And I said, yeah, that's a great. I said, so what's your ad? You know, is, is the ad, you want an ad out there that says, you know, go to Mexico, $200, five star hotel, get there before they build the wall. You know, so <laughs> that would get people's attention. Heck yeah. Urgency, urgency. Urgency, go now. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, okay, so once we have the article with that connects the dots, how do we mm -hmm. actually ask? Like, how do we ask, ask for them to be on a call with us? How do we really make the the commitment so that way you can so actually help so them? So, okay, so understand that the whole point of the article and making it a video and everything else—that's your positioning. Yep. You're demonstrating you're an expert by showing them how what your knowledge helps them achieve their goals or avoid pain. So now you're the expert. So you do that. So now they become familiar. And what's brilliant is. With retargeting and everything else, we know if they visited the article page, we know if they visited the video, we can even 
see how much they watched of it potentially, you know, I'll get an idea, but we certainly know they visited the page. And then of course, we can then target them with the follow-up article or the follow-up video or whatever else it was. And then there's going to be at some point a call to action. So you could then have a video, which is a video sales letter at that point. It could then be a lead magnet. So if you've shown them the articles, you've warmed up the oven, then you give them an, an advert that says, go grab the lead magnet, whatever it might be, the special report, the special video, register for the webinar. You know, that, that then starts to work. And you'll see your conversion rates on those things go up because now they're familiar with you. They know, like, and trust you already. So that, that's important. And once you, it's kind of getting rapport. Once you've got that rapport, then they're on there. Um, and then you really are into, let's see how much more we can demonstrate, how much we can help them. But then obviously we've got some kind of action at the end of it, which says, come on an appointment. Would you like help? What people are buying now is not so much the education as the implementation. Yes. Oh my gosh. So, Cause there's, we're an information overload to the nth degree. So, so people don't need any more information. Yep. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. You know, it's like, you know, if I say to people, look, you're going to get these six modules and you'll learn all about influence. My 20 years experience can press is like, yeah, yeah, yeah great. I know I will you never know, open those emails. I will, I will never, never open the PDF. Yeah, yep. know, yeah exactly. Yeah. You can have a membership site. It could be shipped to me by UPS and it could be cellophane wrapped in gold dust. It's never going to get opened. You know, so what they want is implementation. It's like, let me hold your hand and take you down the process and actually get you to turn this into a project, into a plan and actually do it because that's what's going to make the difference. So you can share great stuff with people, but then you're literally, I mean, all I ever say is like, I, I literally say to people, book your call. Like, would you like book your planning session, book your mark, you know, plan out your next marketing campaign. We'll do all that for free. Book it now, you know, and they'll book something and we vet them. And then, you know, then they get literally just get on a phone call with them and talk through it. And at the end of it, all I say is, you know, would you, would you like me to help you implement it? I have a client in the UK that's very, like she sent one email. She's a 2000 person email list, one email. Yeah. The subject line said something like, um, can we chat Friday or some, one of those like, oh, what's that curiosity piece? She booked 23 appointments for Friday. She only had 18 spots, 23 appointments, all excited because she said something about how, oh, let me help you plan this one little piece. And they're like, oh, let's hop on the phone with her. And of course, it's a, they even know it's a sales pitch. She even talks to them about that. Yeah. And they'll still sign up like crazy because they're like, oh, tell me what to do exactly from some <laughs> real human being sure. sold, which is amazing because yeah. nowadays I feel like we're just on information overload and people are so used to sending out emails that get nothing and all that stuff. So that's why I care so much about the influence side and the positioning side because nobody's Nobody talks about that online. They talk about yeah. copywriting. They talk about different tactic and headlines we can use, yeah. but it never yeah. sort of connects the dots <laughs> for yeah. everybody else, which I really yeah, appreciate. Yeah. See, if, if I'm live with an audience who've never met me, um, and then I can, I've got 90 minutes to do a presentation, that's different. I can take them through a process, you know, and then build it all the stuff around reframing money, reframing time, reframing, you know, why you're limited, all this stuff. And that's great. But online, it's like, no, positioning first. Positioning is everything. You know, let's warm up the oven. Let's demonstrate our positioning. And then let's do a, you know, have a, have a chat with me. But having a chat with me, having a meeting with me is not for everybody. You've got to qualify. You know, no, I, I, think, I think it was Dan Kennedy. I originally read it from years ago, but it stuck with me. You know, nobody goes to see the wise man at the bottom of the mountain. You know, so it's, it's <laughs> <That's> like, <great. laughs> it is very much, you do, it's not automatic. You know, so people... Well, I sometimes get emails of people saying, oh, I heard about you. Would you come and visit me in my office? No. Yeah, exactly. <gasps> Who's got time for that? I'm important. Thank exactly. you very much, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk to me? Then we can arrange Skype. We can do it over the phone. Or you can come and see me at a specific time. But before you do that, please complete this form to make That's... sure it's even worth our so while. Tell me about your form because I have a form too. I, don't, I personally don't talk to people that make less than twenty or $30,000 a month just because I know they can't afford my 101. I do have a salesperson, so, but we have to ask exactly how much they make sure. and all sorts of stuff. So yeah. tell me what's in your form it's when you with high. There's nothing clever about the form. I mean, it literally is, you know, what's your business? What, what, what industry are you in? What do you, how do you generate? I mean, I call it profit centers. What are your profit centers? You know, how do you actually generate a revenue? Because that just filter people out. There's a lot of people who like the idea of being an entrepreneur and they may have kind of made the leap thinking, you know, you know, I'm going to do the fire walk, take the leap and walk across glass and everything else. And then they've got no concept of how they're actually going to turn this into a business or make money. Yeah. So you, you filter those people out straight away. And God bless them. It's like those are the ones that need an education. And, and so there's tons happily, of free information of free out stuff. there. There's tons of information yes. out there. Yeah, absolutely. So, but go digest it. You've got to, if you want to be a self-starter, then go read it, digest it, listen to it, get the tapes, whatever it requires, get the podcast, but actually do something with it. Um, and typically, 
the government here a couple of years back started something called a startup loan scheme. So it was for young entrepreneurs under 25. And of course, they started left, <laughs> handing this money out left, right, and center, and then realizing that nobody was doing anything. <laughs> what a surprise! They, Free oh, money. That sounds best, awesome. <laughs> best will in the world. They're like, yeah, I'm going to start a business, but nothing was actually happening. So then they're like, okay, no, no, we, we need to bring in some mentors. So we got involved, me and a friend of mine. And, you know, so then we'd, we'd put 200 aspiring entrepreneurs in the room and say, okay, look, you're going to need some form of business plan. It doesn't have to be a traditional 40, 60, 80 page plan because they're nonsense for startup. Yes. But you do need a, a one page. And these are the things you need to answer questions to, or at least give me your best guess. So, and I'd say, so how are you going to generate revenue? They come and say, I've got a great idea for this. And I'm like, great, how are you going to generate revenue? Yeah, I haven't thought of that. Okay. Business needs to make a profit, otherwise you don't stay in business. So, I mean, one of my other popular phrases is Bishop Tutu, you know, this African um, bishop uh -huh. who always said, you don't help the poor by being one of them. <laughs> this is why I have my show. This, I, I want more <laughs> people with integrity that actually care to have the money because that makes yeah. all the difference. Or, you know what I mean? When, we, when our dreams can be actually bigger, we can do so many more things when we actually can think bigger, whether it be a nonprofit or not. Yeah. It makes a sure. huge difference. Yeah. I know we have to start yeah. wrapping up. So uh, so let me just ask you this. Give me one more tip before I get to my last question. Give me one more tip on actually closing them once you have them on the phone because I know you're great at this. By the time they're on the phone, they will already know who you are. They already understand your positioning. They already know, like, and trust you. They already know what you charge because tell them straight up front. So if they're not getting on a call, if they're frightened by that. So then 99% of the way there. So I don't actually close anymore. I just talk to them about their plans and sort of say, okay, so we can do this, this, and this. And they're like, great. And, and then I just say, would you like me to help you implement it? I and mean, that literally is, is it now. And if you get any ums and ahs at that point, one, it's rare. But if you start getting people questioning the price or anything else, I just say, you know what? It's been really lovely talking to you. See, and then like you said, it's you having the actual control because I feel like that's why people don't like sales. They're like, I, please, I just, if I say the right thing, you'll say, yeah, that's not how it, if somebody actually wants what you have to sell, it should be a freaking easy sale. I don't want to sell anyone that isn't all in because I don't want to work with them for a really long time. That sucks. Well, by the same token, if I ever do, like closing to me is something I do from stage because mm -hmm. then they don't know me and I've got 90 minutes and I'm talking to them. Yep. And that's very much, this is a journey. When is your life going to change? When are you going to make a decision to do something different? Because until you do, everything stays the same. In fact, it's just going to get worse because you're going to get older and you're going to get uglier. You know, so sort it out. I'm ready to sign up now. I don't want to get older or uglier. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I don't. I mean, I've read books on closing and I don't find any of them particularly helpful. Mm -hmm. I just live by my belief. I'm going to transform your life, but we do it together. You've got to come on this. This is a journey. Start. And unless you're willing to start, nothing's going to change. So I don't need to close. It's literally like it's that. logic. It is logic, yeah. sir. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. I adore this. All right. So I got to ask you the last question. We actually went quite a bit okay. over, by the way. So uh, thank you for that. It's getting dark and I don't even have any lights on <laughs> in here. Uh, so what's one action listeners can take this week to help move them forward towards their goal of a million? I would, I mean, it's in... Short terms, I would say, what, what is the plan? Where are you now? Where do you want to be? How big's the gap? You know, and then it's very much, what is it you're going to, how are you going to add value? So what are you going to sell? If you're going to get into property, don't look at property as, oh, I buy these properties and I put tenants in them. It's like, no, you're, it's still a marketing role. Those tenants are people. How are you going to add value? Mm -hmm. And look at it from those terms. And then, then you'll build a business which actually works because you're building a business to genuinely make a difference in somebody's life. Everything else, tactics and everything else, tactics, strategy, I mean, tactics alone are useless anyway, but strategy and tactics uh, only really work when you start from a position of, I want to add value, I want to make a difference. So okay. shift your beliefs, I would say, is probably my answer to that question. But then it's a win-win for absolutely you, everyone. Yeah, honestly, and if you don't change your beliefs after listening to this podcast, I will track you down. I'm a black belt in karate. I will kick your butt, change your beliefs now, or I will come find you. This makes me so I'm a, I'm a brown second Q. I haven't hit my, my black belt in karate yet, but I will, I, I concur. I will be his little sidekick coming right. after you. We'll do that <laughs> After you, well, you better watch and tapes, the whole world. Can we really? Like, I, I think that'd be great. All right, this is a new marketing plan for me. I, yeah, that's all I want. Foot kick like food, so. oh, I do my tie now. All right, so <laughs> tell me where we can find you online. Give me your name of your website again. If, the, if you're on Twitter or Facebook or anything and everybody wants to link up, where do we find you? Yeah, um, so uniquecoresolutions.com. 
uh, Twitter, uh, Paul underscore Elliot. You'll find me there. Uh, LinkedIn, you'll find me on LinkedIn as well. And you'll find me on Facebook. So all the usual channels these days, I'm there. Which I really appreciate. I, we will link up to most of those, the ones that you want me to link up to anyway. <laughs> and yeah. I really appreciate you coming on today. I actually took notes for my own stuff. So, and that doesn't happen all that often when I'm in the middle of an interview and writing down like the little thing that I'm supposed <laughs> to be doing for the next uh, launch that we're doing. So thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate no it, Paul. No worries. It's been a real pleasure. I, I mean, I love talking, so it's always nice to share ideas. I love it. Have a wonderful night. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening and investing in yourself with your time. I so appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this episode, I would be forever grateful if you would be willing to leave a rating, a review in whatever app you use for your podcast. I know that's what really bumps it up in the rankings. And I would so appreciate your time, especially if you've been a long time listener. But of course, if you like this episode and you're brand new, thank you for being here too. Have an amazing, amazing day.